the process and first findings of operation evaluation of the Central Europe programme. This video was shot during the interactive event, Evaluation, How Did It Go? in Helsinki on the 30th and 31st of May 2017. The aim of the event was to discuss terms of reference and first findings of impact and operational evaluations. In this video, you will hear about how the Interreg Central Europe program has prepared and is undertaking an operational evaluation. They will share how they structured their process and what are the lessons they learned. We had done a separate terms of reference um, for operational evaluation since it started already very early. So this means about one year ago and we are now more or less in the middle of it. So, maybe first to start with an overview of the main picture of evaluations which we have in our evaluation plan. So this presents somehow the logical chain. And there we have um, as a first part the operational evaluation which deals um, with how we transform inputs to outputs. So this means mainly the management processes and the implementation by the program as such and also the projects. And the other arrow there you see is the impact evaluation which then um, is going to look into the change which has been hopefully achieved in our regions. But the impact evaluation comes um, in our program at a much later stage, so notably as from 2020 onwards. So this means only at um, the time when we really think that some results will be visible. Um, as for the timeline, we have um, scheduled the operational evaluation rather early. This means we started already about one year ago in summer 2016 in order to be early enough also to implement some follow-up measures in time. So this means um, for us it was very important that now having already um, selected projects of two calls that then also we have some observations and potential follow-up measures which we can already take up for the third call and also in terms of whatever management procedures which would be uh, which would have the need to be maybe to be slightly adapted. So the overall arching goal of the operational evaluation is to look into the effectiveness and efficiency of program management and implementation. So this is very general. I will present to you the more detailed um, evaluation questions um, in, in a minute. And maybe what is also interesting to see that we have defined it in two separate parts. So the first part which we have concluded now is dealing mainly with the things which you can already also evaluate at the rather early stage of program implementation. So this is linked to the management structure, the communication strategy and the application selection and selection process. And then in a second part, which we will then start after summer this year, we will, um, or the evaluators, they will have a look into the um, more detailed management processes also the project cycle in terms of implementation, reporting, payment procedures and also the more general topics like contributions to 2020 strategy, macro-regional strategies and at the very end there will be a feedback loop then also with an update of the tasks which have been already dealt with in the first part. I think I mentioned already some of the steps of the process, but just to give you an overview of the overall timeline. We started to launch our tender procedure in spring last year. And as I was also saying yesterday, we had received nine offers of different consortia um, across our program areas, so from very different countries where we finally pre-selected two good ones and invited them to hearings. And we had an evaluation panel where also Interact was um, happily involved. So also Interact helped us in um, 
um, evaluating the offers. Uh, and then finally we kicked the evaluation off in July last year with a kick-off meeting, which we did not in a personal meeting, but via Skype in order to save some resources and then to have um, to spare somehow the physical meetings then for a later stage of the implement of the evaluation where we saw that it's then it might be even more needed to interact um, personally. Then in September last year, we had our first evaluation task force meeting, um, which con so the task force consists of different members of um, our monitoring committee, um, national contact points, but also other national experts. And at this meeting, um, the evaluators, they presented the inception report. And there was a lively discussion also with the member states on the different methods and what, um, how the different tasks um, would look like. So I think this was a big added value that there was also the opportunity for the member states to get involved into the definition of the tasks in the inception report. And then in winter, um, they, the evaluators, they started with their um, concrete evaluation work. So they did their desk research. They did a lot of interviews with the program bodies. I think more than twi 25 interviews by phone. So they spent a lot of efforts in talking to people and also getting the opinion of the different program um, stakeholders. And now in March during spring, um, the evaluators, they presented already the first evaluation report to our monitoring committee and the task force. And they are now at the moment in the course of integrating the comments which were received by the task force and DMC. And we hope to finalize now this first evaluation report um, in the coming one or two weeks, I would suppose. Um, this means that we are now concluding this first part and then in autumn there will be the start of the second one. Maybe more in detail, I have just put the main evaluation questions on these slides. As I was first mentioning, one of the main points was management structures, if they are clear, if responsibilities and tasks of the program bodies, they are clearly defined and established. A big task was the effectiveness and efficiency of the application and selection process. And there the evaluators um, um, were supposed to answer whether outreach activities were effective, whether also call procedures um, were efficient and also the tools like manuals and events, trainings, whether they were effective. And this was also very interesting because our first call was a two-step procedure and the second call was a one-step procedure. So they had actually enough material to compare also at, um, sorry, the advantages of the two different types of call procedures. And we had also um, surveys from applicants so where they had also some statistical material about how the satisfaction was with the different types of procedures. And this information is actually supposed to help us now to decide on, the, on whether we will use a one or two step procedure in the third call, which will be launched now in autumn this year. So most likely we will go for again a one step procedure even though there are several advantages also of the two step but finally it seems in terms of effectiveness and also in terms of um, internal resources but also in terms of um, the timeline that the one step procedure is the mo more preferred one. Um, last but not least um, whether the assessment and selection process is sound and, um, and also fair and leading to high quality projects as such to be funded. And in this respect, they had also, um, the evaluators had a very detailed look in the different tools we are using. So for instance, we are also in our program, we have always the four eyes principle for the assessment of project proposals. So we do it internally and externally. 
and they also they did some benchmark with other types of instruments. And last but not least, the evaluators, they also were supposed to have a look at the, or they had a look at the communication strategy, also at the communication indicators, whether they are realistic, whether they are feasible, how the data collection is done in this regard, and also um, whether we have implemented the right approaches in order to reach out to the relevant stakeholders. This flowchart um, shows you also the different um, links or the processes of the tasks, how they feed into each other. So the red part is the one of the evaluation uh, of the, of the pa earlier part, which has been concluded right now with the three main tasks which I presented to you. So this means this is the point where we stand at the moment. So we have this first um, report on our table. And then we have the very big part two, which is then dealing, what I also mentioned before, with um, the other stages of the project cycle, the overall implementation progress, stakeholder involvement, horizontal principles, 2020 strategy, macro-regional strategies. Um, which is actually all the information which is also needed in order to feed then into the big imp um, annual implementation report which we need to deliver to the Commission in 2019. So also this timeline, this means we should have all this information available in 2018. So to feed into this um, reporting as well. What is maybe also interesting is that at the very end we have foreseen also an update with the most recent information also on the tasks which have been done earlier. So this means at the very end we should have a very comprehensive picture of um, the final situation. Since some things they might change and some findings they might not be relevant any longer than in 2018, so this means um, this update is then more than welcome to have everything together at the very end. Um, some preliminary results which we have. So in principle, results are very positive. So the evaluation has confirmed that management structures are sound. Also the communication strategy and application and selection process is well set up and fair and, 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 and um, of good quality. Still, we have received some recommendations, for instance, also in terms of outreach, that um, also at national level there should be more use of social media, for instance, in order to reach out also to newcom more new newcomers, to have maybe also some further more targeted outreach activities in terms of thematic, whatever events, thematic um, publications in order also to reach other types of institutions which are maybe not that familiar with Interact so far, but which would be of relevance for our program. For instance, S3 stake stakeholders, but also we have always had a problem in getting um, enough projects on transport. So maybe to also set more targeted events in the direction of, of transport stakeholders, or also in terms of social innovation actors, so they're some, some potential groups of um, stakeholders which are not that um, well presented yet in the program. Um, the continuation of further simplification measures in terms of use of digital media, etc., cetera, um, where evaluators also acknowledge that we are on a good path, but still, of course, there's always potential for further um, improvement. And what I also mentioned before in terms of call procedures, so that we will most likely stick to um, a one-step procedure, but this will be decided now by, the, uh, by our mon monitoring committee um, in June. And also to, um, to m most likely also to set somehow a strategic focus now for the third call in terms of topics which are maybe not that um, well covered yet. Um, yeah, what um, 
of course, follow-up measures we need to discuss in detail with our monitoring committee, and this will be then um, decided very soon. There is still a lot ahead of us since this um, big second part um, will start in June and this will take another one and a half years. We will have um, a second inception meeting with the evaluators in autumn in order just to define um, also more in detail what are the next steps. What is maybe also interesting is that we are planning to have focus group meetings with the um, different program bodies on different types of management um, tasks. So, for instance, if the um, evaluators, they, they um, observe that there might be the need maybe to discuss with um, national control bodies several issues or several topics in terms of payment procedures or control procedures, there might be a dedicated group on dealing with those issues or a more strategic one. So this needs to be decided then, but there um, are several types of these groups planned to take place um, beginning of next year. Um, the main evaluation topics of this um, second part, as I was mentioning before, is dealing with the um, project cycle. So the implementation of the projects, the reporting, and also payment procedures. What is maybe interesting also here is that we will have a look also in the contents, in the activities. So not only on the management level, but also in terms of what have the projects achieved so far. And whether we are on a good track on um, to finally achieve the objectives and the results which have been promised in the application forms. And this is, um, one task, I think, which will give us also a lot of information in order then to be able to define also the focus of the impact evaluation. So for instance, if we see in this type of thematic analysis that um, there are some results already on the ground which deserve maybe a, a more detailed look in the impact evaluation, we can really base then the impact evaluation on this, or maybe we might define, um, identify some gaps which also deserve more attention to be then um, a, a subject of the, of the impact evaluation. The other topics I mentioned already, these are the more, um, I would say, strategic ones or um, the ones um, where we need the information then also in the annual implementation report 2019. At the very end, I would like to also share a few, I would like to say, practical experiences or um, lessons learned from this first year of our operational evaluation. And in this respect, I would like to emphasize also the importance of the inception report. We were actually spending a lot of time and discussions with the evaluators in getting the inception report to a good level of detail and also to have the same understanding of the tasks which the evaluators are supposed to do. And I think this also saves a lot of trouble afterwards or misunderstandings or whatever if there is a joint basis then to start really the work. Because sometimes what I have experienced also that um, people they just rather do it very quickly or rush and the inception report is done just in order to get it work. And then finally afterwards, I think um, it's maybe less efficient than if we would have invested maybe a little bit more time and thoughts into the inception phase. What we also see that it's necessary to have a very frequent exchange with the evalu evaluators. So we had, I think, hours of phone talks or Skype conferences where we were discussing um, on different types of subjects or where maybe also the understanding of evaluators on some internal processes was not that clear. So we had to explain a lot and also to invest a lot of time. But I think it also pays off because it gives or it also establishes a good relationship with the evaluators. 
and um, they also get a more in-depth understanding of how the program is really working. What I think is also very important is that there is a joint ownership also not only of the MA and the JS but also by the other program bodies like the monitoring committee and the task force that they can really identify and they see also that this is not a waste of money for an exercise which is obligatory but that um, there is also some added, added value which comes out of it. And we always told also our evaluators, we take it serious. So evaluation is nothing which we want just to tick off, so, but we would really like to learn from this. But of course, it's also an investment in terms of not only budget, but also internal resources. So this means also in our office, we have a um, couple of people dealing with evaluation. And of course, it's a time consuming task. So it's nothing which you can just do in five minutes and you get the report and, and then it's done. Um, yeah, data quality and data availability is of course also very important. And in this respect, we were also very happy that we collected right from the beginning also a lot of data in terms of surveys, which we did ourselves, where after each call we were launching a survey to our applicants, asking them about their experiences, about their satisfaction, about the different support measures and the processes. And the same we also do with beneficiaries. And this has proven to be very helpful and the evaluators, they could really make use of a lot of statistical data in order to um, also base their observations and their recommendations. And last but not least, um, what we see that it's also very important, and I think this was also said by um, David yesterday, that we want to have the evaluators um, being very concrete, not to write, I don't know, hundreds of pages in whatever, very gen giving very general statements, but that we ask them to be to the point, to be precise, and this in particular also for the recommendations. And I think this makes it easier then to present it also to the monitoring committee that if we come with something very precise, it's a better discussion basis than something which is more general and foggy and nobody really knows what to do with this. From my side and yeah. If you'd like to see more details about the evaluation of Interreg programs and projects, please check out the different models Interact produced. In each of the models, you will find various materials such as videos, guidance papers, Q&A documents, links and other details.